The guy who designed this ball never played football. And today, I'm testing this football myth out, as well as countless other conspiracies from across the football world. Have the biggest brands been lying to us? I'm gonna find out. The first myth is the Ronaldo pop-up penalty. So in the 2018 Champions League, Ronaldo scored a pretty strange penalty against PSG, where the pressure from his standing foot was so great that he lifted the ball off the ground before shooting. Which apparently helped him generate more power on his shot so he could hit his penalty like a volley. So I'm gonna take five penalties to see if this myth is true or busted. First shot, let's see if we can pull off the Ronaldo penalty. I noticed nothing different about that first shot. I did my best to copy Ronaldo's technique with my next two shots, but I was having doubts about this myth. I've got two more penalties left, and I'm starting to wonder if Ronaldo actually meant to do this in the first place. My fourth penalty still didn't make it off the ground. So I had one last attempt to recreate the Ronaldo penalty, but there was no convincing me that he did this on purpose. This myth is busted. The next myth is that expensive football boots make you play better. So I put the most expensive boots I own up against the cheapest boots I own to see if it was true. Shooting in both boots felt the same though, and so did dribbling. But while the touch felt better in the more expensive boots, they weren't gonna make me a better player. Next up, we have this pretty regular looking football from Nike, but this thing is anything but regular. When Nike first released the flight football in 2020, they advertised it as having 30% truer flight than a regular ball, which means it's the closest we'll get to a perfect football, I guess. So I've put a target in the goal behind me, and I'm gonna be shooting with a regular ball for 10 minutes before switching to the Nike flight to see if this thing is actually better. So it was time to test out the regular ball. Shooting with this ball felt pretty decent though, and after spending 10 minutes with it, I wasn't really sure how much better a football could get. Oh, save. Now, let's try out the Nike flight. But even with just my first shot, this thing felt different. Oh, it already felt better though. The only way I can describe shooting with this ball is crisp. So close. And even though it wasn't 100% perfect, it just felt so easy to whip this thing towards the top corner. By the end of this test, I was really surprised by how good this ball felt. I honestly can't believe how much more accurate this ball is. This myth is confirmed. The next myth is that light boots make you run faster. So I decided to race the lightest boots I own against the heaviest boots I own to see if it was true. And even though it was close, the light boots won. I think there's a lot of other things to consider about this myth, like how aggressive the sole plates are on both boots, as well as the fact that wearing light boots won't instantly turn you into Usain Bolt. But even if wearing light boots only gives you a mental advantage, then I think this myth is confirmed. Next up is the biggest myth in football history. In 2009, Adidas unveiled their new football for the upcoming World Cup in South Africa. Jabalani. The Jabalani was made up of eight thermally bonded panels and was meant to be revolutionary for football. But instead, Adidas created the most controversial football ever. The ball's tragic. I mean, it's no secret. Everyone said that. There's going to be some crazy goals in this World Cup based on the ball. So I'm going to be seeing if the rumors about the Adidas Jabalani are true. And the first rumor I'm testing out is if this ball is unpredictable predictable for strikers. My first shots with the Jabalani proved that it was even hard to keep on target. Huh? But after a while, I felt like I was getting this thing under control. Oh, it's actually going where I wanted to. Until I started seeing the unpredictable side of the Jabalani. Oh, that thing dipped like crazy. And sometimes I didn't even know where it was gonna end up. This ball is absolutely cracked. So the first rumor about the Jabalani is true. The next rumor is that the Jabalani is uncontrollable for goalkeepers. So my friend Sean was gonna go in goal to see what he thought. And this ball had him moving all over the place. Ooh, it's like a snake, man. Ooh. It just decides halfway through, like, this way is not great anymore. I'm gonna go back this way. Honestly, it seemed like the Jabalani was defeating Sean. 
Oh, I didn't even see that one. <laughs> and it just moved so much that there wasn't anything he could do about it. <sighs> this is nothing you can do. I could not control this no matter what. So with two out of three rumors being true, we moved on to the final test. So we're gonna be seeing if this ball moves too fast through the air. A lot of complaints players and managers made about the Jablani was that it was tough to predict from long passes. And we found this out pretty fast. Oh. 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 I thought it started gliding through the air really fast there. Even passes I thought were coming right for me would move. And sometimes when this thing went up, it didn't come back down. And that means all three rumors about the Jabalani are true. So with all three rumors about the Jabalani being true, I guess I have no other choice but to say this myth is confirmed. But I've never enjoyed playing with a football as much as the Jabalani. So while it might be awful, it's actually a lot of fun. Next up, I'm testing out a banned football product. So in 2021, Syria banned teams from wearing green kits because apparently players blended into the pitch too much on TV. So to test this myth out, Sean is gonna be blindfolded while I run outfield. And after taking his blindfold off, he'll have three seconds to find me with a pass. Go for it. He was a different shade of green. I can kind of understand that players might be hard to see on TV, but I really don't think it's that bad. Myth busted. So back when Neymar Jr. played for Santos, he always wore these nasal strips, which sort of became his signature look in Brazil. These are supposed to help you breathe better, but I think he just wore them to look cool. Let's see if they work though. Honestly, I can tell maybe a 5% improvement, but it's not gonna give me five star skills. Myth busted. The next myth comes from one of the best goalkeepers ever. So back in the 90s, Man United's goalkeeper, Peter Schmeichel, wore colorful football shirts that were a size too big because he felt they made him look bigger and would confuse opposing strikers. Huh? So for this test, Sean is gonna face five one-on-ones with a gray shirt in his regular size and then switching to a colorful shirt that's a size bigger to see if it affects my goal scoring chances. So right now, Sean doesn't look that intimidating. In fact, he just kind of looks like Sean. Hello. So we tested out the one-on-ones against the grey shirt and I managed to score my first couple of attempts. Penalty! But Sean finished up the first test conceding only two goals. Then he put on the bright shirt that was a size bigger. And at first, it seemed to be working. But after a while, I actually felt like it was easier to score against this shirt. What I found was that I could see Sean at all times while dribbling since this shirt was so bright. Whereas I couldn't see the grey shirt out of my peripheral vision as much, making it harder to judge where Sean was moving to. Uh, I think it complements my winter figure more, but goalkeeping wise, I don't know. This mitt is busted. Next up are these Adidas Predator boots from 2007. So if we look inside these boots, they come with insoles which Adidas claim help you shoot the ball with more power. So when Adidas dropped the Predator power swerve, the insoles of these boots came with 40 grams of an element called tungsten powder inside them. And Adidas claimed that when you swing your leg while shooting, that the momentum of the powder in the insole would make your shots have more impact. And I can't lie, shooting with these boots felt great. There is something about these boots. Oh my days. The only thing was, I didn't think they made my shots more powerful. And I was more impressed by the extra padding the fold over tongue gave me, as well as the rubber shooting elements, rather than the magic sand inside these insoles. This myth is busted. Next up is a myth for football boots that are too small. And according to this myth, if I fill this football boot with water and freeze it, the ice should expand the boot and fit us much more comfortably. So to do this myth, I put a plastic bag inside this boot and filled it with water. Then afterwards, I stuck it in the freezer and after 24 hours, I took it to the pitch to test it out. That is a foot-shaped piece of ice. These boots were half a size too small for me, but I do feel like the ice stretched them out and expanded them. So this myth is confirmed. Next up is ACC. So for years now, Nike have been selling football boots with all conditions control, which is meant to give you more grip in wet weather. The only thing is, Nike have never actually explained how ACC is added onto their football boots, 
or what exactly it is. But to test if ACC is real or not, I'm gonna be putting an ACC football boot up against a regular boot in a grip test. So I covered both of these boots in water as well as the football to see which boot had more grip in wet conditions. I don't think there's any difference. This myth is busted. Next up is demon skin. So basically when Adidas dropped the Predator Mutator four years ago, they came with these tiny little spikes all over them, which they claimed helped generate a lot more curve on your shot. But is it true? I wanted to see how much curve I could get on my shots without any demon skin at first, so I took a couple shots in my normal boots. Then I put on the demon skin boots. The one thing I will say is, these things are extremely uncomfortable. And after taking just a few free kicks, I felt like the demon skin was working. <sighs> the added grip from the rubber spikes on these boots does seem to add more curve when shooting the ball. <laughs> Save. And while these might be the most uncomfortable boots I've ever worn, this myth is confirmed. Next up is the Jorginho penalty method. So Italy's Jorginho has an 84% penalty conversion rate compared to the Premier League average of 78%. So to test out this myth, we're gonna be seeing if the Jorginho method can help us score more penalties. To test out if the Jorginho method makes me better though, I took five normal penalties where I scored three of my attempts. Next up, the Jorginho method. After trying out this method, I found it was pretty successful if you just wait for the keeper to commit to one side before shooting. But if Sean decided to wait for me to kick first, then it was actually a lot more difficult to get power behind my shots. So in my opinion, both penalty techniques have their advantages. But I really think if you master the Jorginho method, then this technique does give you an advantage. This myth is confirmed. Well, there it is, guys. I just busted the biggest myths in football. But if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this one too. See ya.